Jake, my friend, good to see you. Thank you so much. It's it's interesting because I have the pleasure of like being able to catch up with a lot of folks through this podcast that I haven't talked to in a while. And you know, a lot of folks who are like super busy. So it's always great like catching up with you and, and thanks for your time. I know you're doing a lot of uh, evangelizing uh, uh, around what modern sales looks like. I knew you've yeah. been talking about that for a very long time. Uh, we've had the pleasure of knowing each other. Could we say now, like maybe 10, yeah, 15, man. 15 yeah, years, something in, like yeah, that? Right when I first started scaling, probably we met at least at like within the first year. I think we met for the first time. I've got a weird memory. I usually like don't even remember people's names, but I'm pretty sure it was like it was in San Francisco and there was like a training that was going on. Hmm. Maybe sales hackers doing a training and I did a yeah. session like Richard Harris was there. Hey, Richard Harris. Yep. Yeah, I don't remember. But were I you at Grubhub? That- this building i don't remember man yeah I, i'm trying I, to remember the organization you were you were vp of sales was that glass Club Hub? no glass oh glass yeah. that's right yeah, that's glass right. door and then a company called chartbeat prior yeah got it got it all right well awesome well let's dive in because i know everybody's pretty excited confused scared you know about <laughs> ai uh you know if you were to kind of just you know share some of the the thoughts you have around how sales organizations can really leverage AI today. Maybe we can kick off uh, starting there. Yeah, and I'll, I'll maybe do a little bit of history. You know, like we've, people have been talking about AI and sales for, uh, you know, that's not new. You know, the, the real the real disruption is generative AI, right? The, the AI we used to see before was candidly like, you know, machine learning, if this, then that, you know, if these things happen, then there's a correlation and, um, and then like the first generation of a lot of the AI tools was like, we're going to help you to write a better email. And I mean, that's an interesting application and surely it can, it can help. But, um, what generative AI has done is allow us to just, there's so many different parts of this, the sales organization it, it can impact. And what I try to do now is I try to not overwhelm people with like, it could do this and this and this, cause I'll just go on tangents. Um, But if I had to simplify it, there's kind of two core areas where generative AI will immediately move the needle for any organization that implements it. Um, The first is in, call it like preparation, research, and customization. That, you know, with chat GPT right now and, you know, some custom um, GPTs that we've developed, you know, I can literally enter the prompt suggestion and it says, okay, great. What's the company? And we'll try to find their press release page. and so you can literally draw, drag and drop a link to a company, a link to the person that you're meeting with, a link to your product page. And actually, we can program that last part on the back end and say, write me a research prep analysis for this company based on the top three trends that they're talking about in their blog, their press releases, and their annual report that are relevant to the products that we sell. Hmm. That would take me like two hours. And now I can put together this like very rich. And again, maybe I'm preparing for my first meeting. Um, Maybe I'm trying to book a meeting with someone. But what what generative AI allows us to do there is get back to what we used to do in sales. We used to personalize things. We didn't used to look to just automate everything. And and by the way, how's automation working for everyone? It's Mm -hmm. not. And so the key now is this world of, hey, we have these templates and structures of emails that might work, but we can use generative AI to infuse very detailed, you know, whether it's even if you're just going as far as relevant, like persona and industry um, insights. Um, And then the other is onboarding and training. And, you know, imagine a world where, you know, we're we're doing this with clients now where, you know, what ChatGPT can let me do. And again, other custom bots like what we've built can help you to do is to say, um, okay, um, you work at this company, you sell to this persona. These are the products. You can program all that on the back end. Um, Help me to role play this objection with this persona. I will make a statement. You ask a question, be me- be medium difficulty. It, it used to take me three months to get, you know, you know, 20 meetings under my belt. Now in my first week of onboarding, I can role play and do things. Another one of my favorite ones is quizzes. I can say, create me a 15 question quiz based on insert link to this product page. And it immediately creates a quiz in real time. Mm. So our ability to get reps ramped faster on who we sell to, the industries we sell into, and the products and the combination of those has changed for forever. And so I think if anybody is looking to get started, I've got like 5 billion other use cases. But you know, when I talk to 
you know, tens and tens of sales leaders about this. Those two are the ones that I think most can wrap their head around and is where if I was, you know, implementing generative AI for the first time, it's, it's where I'd start. I wanted to touch on something quickly that you said regarding the first use case, personalization yeah. and how we used to do personalization and we moved around with yeah. or moved away from it. How the hell did we like move away from it and still, I mean, be and relatively still holding on to it when it's not working and like 18% of people are hitting quota like or something. I, I can't remember the last number I saw. Um, let me, I'll try to kind of break down my thoughts on this. I think it starts, and again, I've, thought, I've actually thought a lot about this. It starts with the mindset of the sales leadership organization. And it used to be, I remember, I'm, I'm, I'm very specifically remember, I was at a company called Career Builder. This is late 2000s. And, you know, I had a book of business. I had, you know, we were a mature sales organization. So I had a book of business, right? I only had, you know, maybe a few hundred accounts, right? And my job was to get a meeting with that person. I the the I had activity minimums for sure. Trust me, my activity minimums. Just so you know, at the same time, a hundred activities a day and two and a half hours of talk time. Mm. That was my those are the minimums. Okay, but philosophically, we were focused on getting meetings with individuals. Mm. I want to get me. Hey, Jake, you know, um, this company ABC.io is in your account patch. Your job is to get a meeting with that company. So do what it takes to get a meeting with that company. And I think what happened is over time, especially with the rise of sales engagement, we started making the focus, the motion and the activity. And we moved away from the concept of like, no, your job is to get a meeting with that mm. company and the specifically the right person there who can do that. And so you need to adapt what you're doing to generate a meeting, not to generate an activity that looks good on a chart. And by the way, you can have it both ways. Like I said, I had minimums. And my minimums in today's standards would, would look audacious, right? And so I think we've got to get back to this concept of like, look, why your outbound isn't working is you don't care about getting a meeting with a person. You don't care about, I'm going to get a meeting with ABC.io's head of sales. You worry about, did I get enough emails out to spread out mm. coverage across my accounts? And so... I think you know the teams that are going to be successful and the teams that are successful today realize that it's about getting a meeting with the person and the company, not the spread of activity across all the accounts. And for the leaders out there, how do they put processes in place and coach up their, their reps to be able to shift away from to your point, like over engineering, focused on process and numbers and hitting those things as opposed to the actual end results and, and getting to those individuals. Because like I found like I needed when I was a rep, I needed the the grit and that hunger and that, you know, like that desire to win that one battle to get that one punch in, right? Like using the boxing analogy, as opposed to saying, Hey, you got to move your arms 52 times this hour, right? Like how do we shift and then develop something that's quantifiable? Cause I think that's probably, you get a lot of like, you know, just managers who are just trying to like check boxes and then, you know, sort of like hit yeah. their, their KPIs and don't really get it. Uh, well, there's a, I think there's a few things here. Like step one is you have to accept, you know, step one is acceptance that this current modality is not equaling the results that you would like. And if you can accept that, then you can also accept that there needs to be an alternative. What I think a lot of leaders are doing right now is saying, we're this close. You know, we just need to do more activity. And it's like, you're not, you're way out of there. So we got to do something different, right? Step one. Step two, and the interesting part is this is not actually a really big lift. If I'm a frontline leader in my in my one to one, I'm going to ask my rep to bring one or two accounts every week, and I'm going to say, "Okay, Jake, you're trying to get him. Uh, you're trying to get a meeting with Brian Smith. Brian is the head of you know uh, operations at this manufacturing company. Let's spend ten minutes, Jake. Let's go research. Okay, who is Brian? What does he care about?" How does that relevant? And again, I can use ChatGPT to aggregate this for me. So it takes two minutes. And then I say, all right, Jake, what do you think? If you were going to craft a message to Brian, what do you think some key elements will be? Great. Love that. All right, let's try that. Right now. Okay. Now, Susan Smith, 
She's a operations manager at this company. Okay, great. What's different here? Is there anything different? You just have to train the reps. People, we as humans are, look, AI is very good at automation. It's very good at really good automation too now, right? Like it's getting there. My friends, all we have le all we have as humans right now is critical thinking and creativity. And by the way, AI is actually pretty good at creativity and critical thinking. Um, so I think what we have to do, and again, it, this isn't some massive leap. Instead, it's teach your reps. And this goes back to onboarding where, you know, we have to teach our teams the persona we care about. What do they care about? What keeps them up at night? Set up customer meetings for customers to do a, to do a round table with three or four customers and let mm -hmm. your sales team pepper them. I, I remember I was a sales leader. Again, this is years ago. A friend of mine was a VP of operations at McKesson. And I took my whole, I mean, this is a, I don't even know, five to 200,000 square foot facility. I took my whole team down there on a field trip. This is what a VP of operations is thinking about. And you're looking at this space and all this, you know, millions of SKUs and things that are getting shipped out. And you're like, whoa. So I think if you don't, it goes back to the old school stuff with sales, but, but it's not happening as much. You, you have to understand what your buyer is going through. What is their, what does their life look like outside of just your product? So then you can know how to better talk to them. And it's not that big of a lift from where we're at now. It's just adding in a little bit more of that. So then reps can become more tailored in their approach. It's it's not, we're not actually that far off. Mm -hmm. We just have to create, we just have to make sure we're doing a better job of really focusing on this is who we sell to. This is what we care about. This is how we help them. And then allowing our reps to then do some of that personalization, or whether it's you know true personalization based on the individual, or just knowing what a VP of operations in a manufacturing company is going through, you know, call it relevancy. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really it. It's not. It's not a. It's not a big lift. You know, we already have templates. We already have the things and the tools. The tools themselves aren't the problem. It's the application of the tools. Yeah. And so if, if if your templates have room in there for somebody to put in something interesting then allow them to do that, train them on how to do that and allow them to do it. So that's, that's, that's what I would, that's what I would do. Well, that's what we are doing, you know, it's for our clients and for others. Yeah. You know, that what comes to mind for me and what that sort of sparks is those mediocre sales people, right. Who are just cruising. They're not preparing. They're not the expert in the room. They just fielding sort of the, inbounds or maybe they you know you know they had some hits uh from an from from the well especially these days where you know if they do get any uh, responses from outbound th those those folks are just not they're not going to exist anymore they can't right like you really have to be that expert in the room you have to have a strong command uh or else you're just not going to make it and, and and for a lot of people out there who might hear what you said and, and get like imposter syndrome right I, I, again i'll take you back to when i was 26. Here, here's what i i and again look you have to make a decision are you a sales professional or are you punching a clock because if you don't want to be a sales professional and you're just punching a clock and you're not able to add value that's where ai can come in mm. if you're a sales professional you want to help people's businesses right? Or whatever it is you sell, you know, what that might be. When I was 26, here's what I knew. I was calling into HR and these were senior level people, people with at least 20 years more experience to me. And let me tell you this, like I never, I never thought I knew more than them as a whole in their career. But because I was a sales professional, I was like, I know more about recruitment advertising than they do. And so because I knew what my buyers cared about, I knew what kept them up at night. And I truly knew it, not just like sound bites. I thought mm. and I processed it. And then I knew how we could apply that. I'd never had that imposter syndrome. I mean, there were mm. some meetings where I'm like, I should not be in this meeting. But then I would get my VP involved or, or my CR. I had, you know, I had two different meetings. I got our North American uh, CEO and our global CEO involved because I got meetings with the you know, CEO of Kempton Hotels and the head of talent acquisition for Intel. I didn't run that meeting. Are you kidding me? I would have been smoked. But for the rest of the folks, I could have a conversation. And I'm like, look, I, beca I became an expert in how to solve solutions and talent acquisition. And for any of you in sales, if you don't give a shit enough about your product to become an expert in the solution that you provide to a business and you care, that's why you're not being successful. Mm. 
And so you have to care about this solution. The good part about me is I, I, I'm very curious. And so I can get excited about a lot of different products. <laughs> so it didn't matter for me. But then I went to media SaaS and other things. And now, you know, we've got thousands of clients in every industry. And that like, I actually really like that part of my mm -hmm. role. Um, so yeah. So anyway, that's, that's my hot take on it, man. Of like, it, it really isn't that complex. It's like, are you spending more time talking about the buyer, how we help them, um, the alternatives that exist, so then when your salespeople or your SDRs are interacting, they sound like somebody who knows what they're talking about. Yeah. And that's trainable. I don't care if you're 26 or if you're 46. I can train you on the industry much more so than I can train you on like great sales. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's dive real quick into chat GPT. You know, I know you've been posting a lot of com uh, content, uh, prompts, information around how to use these, this wonderful tool. If you're a sales leader out there and you're thinking about 2024 planning and you just had, you know, to start to think about how do I fit uh, chat GPT into, you know, that whole, my whole yep. strategy moving forward in, into these playbooks, what are some of kind of like the low hanging fruit for me to get started? Because I think we all understand there's some power there, but I think what I've experienced talking to folks out there, they're just like, Oh, I don't know where to start. I don't even know. Yeah. I, I hear you. And like I said, I said that early in my example earlier, that's, 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 that's totally normal, right? Very normal as a part of this. Um, I'll answer this question two ways. You know, the first is that, look, as a sales leader, right, and as a rep for sure, um, you have to understand how to use this technology. It reminds, I mean, this, it's the same, the conversations we're having right now, man, it's the same conversations people had about the internet in 1996. Yeah, uh, I don't even know. Should, they, should these people have access to the internet? Do these computers need access to the internet? Do I, do I need to get online? Uh, email. Oh yeah. I'll like, print those out. And it's this, Oh, security. Oh my gosh. What if someone visits a website? Oh my gosh. Guess what? Your employees probably already visit only fans or something on their computers already. So you're sitting here worried about security and all these other things. Like it's, it's kind of a, uh, it, again, it's a very, I, I imagine I wasn't a part of it. I wasn't in the workforce then I was, uh, you know, growing up in it. I have to imagine the conversations were mm. nearly identical. So the answer, the question, step one is you have to say to yourself, we have to at least do something. Okay, great. Now, what is that something? I, like I said, and I'll go back to actually what I said before. The two best ways we've seen people implement this right now early. And again, like we have our own custom GPT that we can customize to the organization. Um, you know, you, there's some ways for you to do some like lightweight custom GPTs yourself um, is prep research and customization. So, hey, here's how we're doing our sequences. It's very easy. And and the the other part is, you know, all of you, if you go to ChatGPT, you'll see those four little bubbles, right? That are like the conversation starters, mm -hmm. right? So just imagine you can build a bot that says, you know, build me a personalization template for a persona. And it just does it. You click it, you tell it the company and it does it for you, right? Or build me a prep sheet for my next meeting. You click the button, it tells it for you. So um, I think... Prep research and customization, that bucket to me is a very easy one. And then the other one that's, again, maybe a little more behind the scenes is, you know, hey, if, if one of your top bottlenecks is I need to get my people ramped sooner, yeah. then I love the onboarding use case. Because, again, I can start to get my team repetitions, whether it's via role plays, quizzes, other ways to interact with our product page. Um, I can really get people up to speed faster. So I would say take a look at your organization. Jake, you know, what is the challenge that we're facing? And can we put together something lightweight to get the team comfortable with it? You know, we've got a series and we'll share these, you know, make sure we get share them in the show, uh, show notes. We've got a series of workshops that we do, very lightweight stuff just to get you kind of deeper on some of those. Um, so I'll maybe sign up for one of those as well, too. If you're like, you're like, Jake, I don't have two days to spend on this. Come spend it, you know, an hour and a half or three hours, depending on what you sign up for. Um, but you have to start to learn the tools. It's like saying, you know, it's like the person, you know, who waited too long to understand the power of the internet, because that's, that's where we're at right now in terms of the power of this technology and what it can do for sales orgs. Jake, thank you so much for taking the time to chat today and being on the show. Very much appreciate it. If folks wanted to 
let's say, you know, follow your content or start to learn more about how, you know, scale could really be able to help with their AI chat GPT strategies. You mentioned these workshops and we'll go ahead and put links to, to these references in, uh, in the post when we put this out, but just, just at a high level, any sort of URLs or channels that are best to reach you. Yeah. I mean, obviously LinkedIn, I'm very active there. I'm talking about this stuff 24 seven. Um, so just it's forward slash Jake Dunlap, feel free, connect, DM me. Um, we're going to be launching, um, our innovative seller community. So again, just make sure to connect with me. Um, so when that comes out, uh, we already have this AI prompt pro. So sign it's 50 bucks, sign up for that. That'll get you a lot of these prompts that you hear me talking about. Mm -hmm. We've built out one of the more comprehensive B2B libraries of prompts. Um, and, and I think the, that's it. You know, the step one is just to, to start to use it, you know, and you need to start to under, what is this thing capable of? Like, you know, I, I was talking to Kevin Dorsey and I was like, man, I feel like sometimes a chat GPT, it's like I do mushrooms every day. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, wait, man. So like, if you can do this, you can do that. And I'm like, then it's like, if I can do that, I can do like the, the use cases again are limitless. Hopefully today I gave you two really easy ways to get started. Awesome. For folks out there, meeting preparation and training and onboarding, you can really, really leverage ChatGPT and AI to, to be able to help with this. Jake, my brother, happy holidays. Thank you so much. We're going into 2024, brother, to a, to a great year. Let's go, man. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. Have a good one. 